All right, anyways, sorry if uh sorry for the profanity, but you know Ice Cube is the man. Mucha gracias. Mucha gracias for being on the show, bro. We got uh Richard and Mario, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. Okay, so uh if you don't mind, I'm gonna be cooking while I interview you guys because uh I'm hungry and that's what we do on this show called Como. Okay. Uh Richard, I think you even you will be impressed. I'm gonna make uh Brussels sprouts uh cacho pepe. Oh yeah, oh that sounds good. Yeah. A little healthy and light because I'm going to eat something thicker for dinner, uh, heavier for dinner. So I want to do something like that. Uh, I didn't have any Chinese sausage. I was going to make a Brussels Chinese sausage, cacho pepe, because uh, I like I have to have my cheese. But I'm going to do that. So talk to us a little bit about what you guys are doing right now. Um, right now we're doing a lechonera pop up, right? So I should get into that. Uh, we're both Puerto Ricans. I think it's um. Uh... It's something that is very personal for us. Uh, when when all these pandemics started, uh, we were looking for a way of like just expressing ourselves. Really, that's how everything started. Um, so we were chatting one day, and we were like, "Dude, let's let's do something we just know how to do." So. And you guys, how, how long have you guys known each other? For over ten years now. Yeah, over ten years. Y Mario, what time? What time Miami con Richard or or Yeah, yeah. Virginia? Yeah, um, we met in culinary school, and then we have worked together since. Um, it's like seven restaurants, 10 years. Where are some of the restaurants you guys worked at? Um, we worked for Sugar Cane. We started working at a hotel called 305 back in Miami. Uh, worked for Sugar Cane, opened up uh, Porcao. Um, worked for Alberto when we, we met in Bread and Butter. Yeah. Uh, so we worked for Alberto and Bread and Butter, Little Bread, um, for Continental, Stevenson Star, and now here in DC and Virginia with um, Founding Farmers. And so I want to, I, I, it was important that we go through that journey so that we see that your steps forward, because part of the reason for this show is not just where you're at, but the, the journey. You sure. know, right now the industry is going to change. Uh, y entonces estamos hablando de, de la industria, pero the craft. You were, work, you guys were both working at high prime areas, good spots. What made you guys move to, to from Miami out? Um, everything started with a job opportunity. Um, I got a, I got reached out by founding farmers here in the DC area. They had a restaurant right by, well, they still have a restaurant uh, right by Chinatown. So um, I was the executive chef for, uh, for that location, specifically farmers and distillers. Um, and Mario came in with me as my sous chef, a um, little over a year by, you know, working for founding farmers, I got promoted as the director of culinary operations and people development. Um, so a lot of people training, a lot of um, food implementation, but um, that's basically why we got moved from Miami here. Okay, and then you work, you you move for a job opportunity. When did you say we're gonna open up the Lechonera? Well, literally last summer. Last summer. <laughs> last summer, um, we were chatting at home uh, and like we said, we're, we're friends. We, we're always talking about cooking and, and our career and, and friendship have been evolving around cooking, actually. So we wanted to do something that felt just right and natural for us. And, and roasting pig is like, um, it's like barber shop talk, like you said, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 <laughs> it really is because there's, le, there's uh, the Puerto Rican lechon, there is the Cuban lechon, and then yeah. there's the Dominican pernil, which is a pet peeve of mine when they call it lechon on the menu because it's not a true lechon, right? Yeah. 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 But it's, it's just a marketing thing now. And, uh, also, and also there's there's Asian variations. See. Like Filipinos does their own um, lechon. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a global food. Um, every place they do it kind of their own way, like Spanish do their cochinillos. Yeah, exactly. Common that is like roasted. But it's very particular from every place. Like it's completely different from place to place, even though it's the same, it's the same okay. thing. Which is so, to... so before we move on, can you explain that? Tell me your opinion, lo particular de lechon boricua first. What, what is the flavor profile of it? So Puerto Rican lechon is, is um, I like to call it like with a lot of with simple seasoning, salt, pepper, oregano, oil, and garlic. There's no more much to that. Um, and then what is really typical of Puerto Rico is the anato oil that it used to get that golden brown. 
Yes. And that's like the staple of like the Puerto Rican. And we never, we always cook it on top of the, of the ground uh -huh. in a pit with charcoal. You know, there's- In, 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 a, in, a, in a rope, like a- In a rotisserie pit, pit, exactly. Okay. In a rotisserie pit ahora, with charcoal. Y entonces, ahora, el lechón cubano, ¿cómo es? The Cuban is a lot of like citrus. They like to use like the naranja area. They like to use the comino. They like to use uh, garlic and all that. But the main flavor on the, on the Cuban one is the, is the naranja area. That's what it is. Ah, the y ellos, they, they put it in a pit or in a caja china? Yeah, they, they, caja china, or they do, they do pit. I think the traditional way is kind of similar to the Puerto Rican one. Yeah. But when they move to the United States, they adopt the caja china because of like, I guess the product of the caja china came out, the rotisserie, and everybody uh, in Miami adopt that style. Caja, caja china has been more like a New York trend than just old school cooking. If you go back to like uh, Pinas de Rio or like, like very like ancient uh, areas of Cuba, they just cook over fire and or under the ground, like either or. Um, and I think the caja china became from that uh, initial concept of uh, let's make a hole on the ground, put charcoal over, um, and basically you're doing a hot box or an oven uh, replication. Yeah, no, I, I, li I like that. And I want to do a difference. So how did you guys start it? Uh, ¿Cómo comenzaron ustedes a hacer un lechón? Well, um, for, for me, I grew up cooking lechón. It was like a ta uh, family tradition and, and business. Okay. Uh, I grew up with my great grandparents and they started, well, we used to sustain our family by selling lechón and, and my great grandparent, he was like, uh, he was a lechonero. So okay, he, I he, didn't know that. Yeah, he used to cook lechons for like wealthy people, right? They had a party, they needed some professional cooking at their party and then they'll bring my grandfather, my great grandfather to do the cooking for, uh, for them. And, and actually we also did that for us is just yesterday we had three Kings day and every year we had a lechon at home for three Kings. It's, it was like a family tradition and that's how everything started. Um, so I'm just, I'm just in, embracing the tradition and embracing what I, what I learned. I think number one, you should embrace the tradition, which is great porque it fulfills you. It's a barbershop talk, but I believe that lechon could be the next fine dining. Oh yeah. You know, uh, even the presentation, you know that like, like the Japanese with hibachi grill, right? When you bring a caja china you and lechon entero and you could do a presentation with some bao buns, you could do it with some jicama tacos. Uh, you can do it with traditional dishes, you know. It's a good presentation, and I'm always up for traditional uh, food being elevated to a different audience, you know. There's always a wow factor with the lechon. Exactly. Especially when, when you do it like the whole pig, and you, were, like you said, you can do like the baos, you can do tacos. Um, pan con lechon is something we always have on mind. Porqueras. Porqueras. Dumplings. There you go. Dumplings. Um, but for us... Dumplings. Uh, Dang. I, yeah. I remember back home when, when, when you were able to have a lechon on your party, everybody was coming because everybody want to see the roasting process. Everyone want to see... And then you could have music, you could have whatever, but the main, the main thing on the party was always the lechon. So everybody yeah. was always gathering around the lechon. The domino table was close to the lechon. The, okay. beer, the, the neverita with the beer close to the lechon. And when we do our lechon, we, we, that's what we try to do. We try to, to keep like our roots or where we come from, where, where, where we learn it, you know, play respect to all, the, to all that. Okay, so tell me a little about your company. When did you guys launch it again, Richard? Um, it was starting in August. Okay, August. So, Mario, como es? Is it a pop-up? You guys, uh, tell me how... It's a, it's a, it's a pop-up. Okay. We do it once a month. Um, and then how it works is we try to keep some staples on the menu every month, but there's always something new that we might put this month, take the next one. If it's really good and the people like it, might stay. Um, of course, we're chefs, so we want to we wanna always keep uh -huh. ourselves, like, entertain with what we do, and we want to put our own spin in the classical Puerto Rican food, you know. In our menu, there's some staples. The lechon is always there. The yeah, so that's what I appreciate about Richard is that, you know, even though you guys are doing lechon, I get to see the different stuff. Like he did a paella anoche with lechon and, and the yeah. colorni, 
Uh, you know, I, I love the French techniques. I love the craft, but I always love how we have the ability to go back traditional. Yeah, that's 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 how we keep ourselves like something in. something we've been doing and, and try to enforce when when we're doing our cooking is um, we're actually putting in there our experiences, right? Everything we learn, everything that we have experienced and 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 learned through all the years, without without missing out that traditional flavor. Exactly. And that's what okay. makes us like very special. You know, that's what we can, we consider ourselves that we separate a little bit is on that. We try to stay on the roots, but we also applied our knowledge on ingredients. We apply our knowledge like on, on everything we have learned in this career that we have. And I bet you, I bet you, you have more fun making that lechon and seeing the, the demand and then seeing the faces of when they try it. See si or no? Man, you have yeah. no idea. We, <laughs> yeah. we have, um, when we started, it's funny you say that but, uh, because when we started, I remember my second lechonera. Uh, we were we were rushing and running around and try to get everything together because we were live already. Um, and we had this lady that came to basically to our house and to pick up some food. And she asked my wife if she could just walk through the backyard. She wanted to see. She smelled the the the, the burning wood and she burned everything. When she walked to the pit, she was in tears. She's mm -hmm. like, dude, just, just thank you. Like she couldn't say anything else. She's like, thank you for bringing a piece of home here. So, um, it is, it is gratifying. It is gratifying. It is it's special for us. And, and I mean, people, people is what makes everything special. I believe I, I can, I can cook anyone, you know, uh, a delicious ceviche, but I feel better when I cook something from Nicaragua because so Nicaraguense and it reminds me of growing up with my mother and father. And then they try what we call bajo, which is basically brisket, yuca, platano, mm -hmm. uh, herbs, and um, vegetables, and citrus steamed in banana leaves until super tender. And so when you have the smell, so anyway, so I, I see that it's gratifying. And I think that's the future is to ex excel and scale la lechonera, correct? Yeah, yes, sir. Um, because that's how it starts. It starts from a pop up to eventually the next step, and then you know, because that you'll never you'll never work a day in your life if you have your business and your passion. Uh, I mean, you're completely through. Um, I think it. I think it's much much more than that. I, I think is is gratifying. And it's important for us. But you, just, just, just the starchy water, and I'm letting you pull out. Para que process. Yeah. <laughs> um, but from one of my mentors. <laughs> I think it's a community. I think I think we, us Latinos, right? I, uh, we found a way of speaking, and 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 I think food is 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 our best channel to express ourselves these days. Uh, okay. I think food makes every single Latino culture very special, um, and it's been it's been giving us the opportunity of of talking, speaking out, of you know, expressing well ourselves. So let me ask you this. What makes your lechon good, delicious? Okay. And, and you don't have to give me the ingredient. Is, is it the style? Is it the flavor profile? El color? El, el, el pellejo? El cuero? Tell me what is the your secret. Like if someone says, my bajo, well, because I don't cheat. Cut corners. I salt the beef yeah. two days before para que esté saliado y esté moist con la presión, right? And you have to have the right amount of salt in that dish. ¿Qué es el secreto de la lechon de usted? I think I think what what you're saying is we don't cut any corner. Okay. The, the pig the pig is a we we get a really high quality pig. That's where everything start. Um, it's seasoned two three days in advance. Okay. And then we are it's a lot of work, but it gets basted every hour with the another seed oil. Okay. It takes about six to seven hour on the pit, and we don't like you say we don't rush it. Yeah. We, we take like it's fresh oregano, fresh garlic, um, salt, pepper, and then it's just don't cut the corner. We do it like Richard's, Richard's grandpa, grandfather used to do it. Like how I came from the way I see the old people roasting pigs. That's how we do it. We keep it as traditional as possible and not cut the corners, even though it involves a lot of, a lot of labor to get it. But you see the result, and when you see the result, you forget about everything else. You forget about all the hours you put into it. Yeah, because there's there, you, you want to keep it juicy, but you don't want to have not enough chicharrón. Yeah. So, so my, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot to do with it. So 
Um, Chicharron is like socorat to el arroz. If you don't have a yeah, socorat, yeah, then yeah, exactly. it's like having a cool outfit and your shoes suck, you know? So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about Chicharron making because I'm going to introduce you guys, my friend Juan Martinez. Get him and his uncle and his father are traditional Cuban and they have, they're almost masters at it to the point where they choose a certain kind of coal or wood for a certain color. I'll send you guys the pictures. Pero let's talk a little bit about Chicharron because most lechon in, that I've tasted in the States, the majority, there are good ones, but la mayoría no son tan bueno. And that is because they'll only give you maybe 25% of a chicharrón that was formed properly con la carne jugosa. So to me, that's a waste of a pig. So let's talk chicharrón making. How important is it to you guys? Que esté el cuero nice. I mean, for us, chicharrón is everything. Um, yeah. You can't have lechon without a crispy crackling, right? So... Uh -huh. um, Basically, we cook the lechon for about six to seven hours, um, slow, slow cooking, um, on direct heat from the charcoals and the and the wood. Um, we use a mixer between hardwood charcoal and fresh wood, uh, dry wood as well. Um, but the chicharrón, what we what we certainly do as we're as we're basting the last few hours of the of the lechon at the very end when we know the the lechon reaches the what I mean. You cook lechon up to 145. We like to bring it up to like 155 because we believe that's where the caramelization and 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 the, the flavor of the meat is ready. Um, we blast the lechon with fresh charcoal in the bottom, and we sprinkle it with salt, and we just keep it rotating on a fast speed with a lot of uh, high heat. So we create what we call uh, chicharrón bolao. So chicharrón bolao is just puffy skin can be just regular uh, crispy skin, it has to puff. Um, and to do so, we just blast it with uh, direct coals and a little bit of salt over um, for about five minutes. You can leave the side of the lechon, right? You gotta stay there. No, you gotta... es la, es la, esa es la parte más importante. So yeah, yeah no, I, I've never, first time I've heard of that, and that is amazing, because I can't wait, because I will say this, because I've had so many bad lechons, and it's not, uh, it, you know, it's not a bad thing. It, I haven't had very many good lechones. Like when I go to Puerto Rico and Guavate or Guavate, the, yeah. that I've learned so much from there. Uh, el pavo chon I make. You saw Richard, you and I exchange on that. That's one of my favorites to make. But I'll tend to like the Cuban lechon only because the ones that I've tried from the people have been, you know, better. And I want to try a good lechon. Que tenga sabor, que tenga un poquito sal, because that's key to yeah. the Puerto Rican yeah. lechon. Que hay veces que le falta eso. But lechon bolado, that's the first time I've heard of it, and that is so key. Well, so much chicharrón is wasted if that's done properly. If you go to Bayamón, which is one of the cities, oh, well, you're nice. getting there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, one of the cities of Puerto Rico, they're, they're very well known from uh, for having chicharrón bolado. So it's this puffy, crispy uh, pork crackling they sell on the streets. You can be driving and they have it on the roadsides and just stop and buy and start munching on a... Uh, yeah, because, um, there, because the, with the whole pig, there's enough chicharrón for a lot. And I'm telling you, I think you guys would agree, a lot of the lechoneras here, it's a missed opportunity when they waste some so much of the skin because it's not properly done. Well, something that I implemented on the way we we're finishing our pork is I used to work with this like um, old guy that taught me a lot about Puerto Rican cuisine and old cookery, right? When it comes down to our roots, um, he used to put a fan mm -hmm. on his chicharrón. So after cooking the pig, he will put a fan on it, directly on it, and that will make the skin get dried out and um, crispier. So that's something we do after we remove the, the pigs from the pit. Uh, we have a huge fan that we put right in front of the pig and we let it ventilate uh, for about 20 minutes before we start cutting into it. Oh, that's badass, bro. That's yeah, badass. That's I, super, I love this. Super crispy. Super crispy. Ahora, let's talk about this. Where do you want to be? Where would you like to be? In three years, in, in two years with Le La Lechonera? I would like to be known and would like to spread through all that, you know, the states and the U U um, DMB area. Um, we, wanna, we want people to know how good our food is and our traditions are and, and, and what Puerto Rican food is all about. No, that's awesome. Uh, would you like to do this where it would be a, a, a brick and mortar Lechonera? Because you don't see too many of those in the States. Yeah, that's that's something we always have on the mind. That's always we always looking into it. Um, we like we would like to have a place, either if it's like a little part, a little 
a piece of land with a little trailer that we can do our pork or maybe a brick and mortar place. But definitely that's what we're looking into it is at some point try to get a place that people can come and people can, for all, it's all about the tradition. It's all about the nostalgia of right. like, of like feeling back home. And we yeah. want to try to bring that as possible. Yeah. What else? I'm just thinking out loud. The pandemic, you're going to have a, you know, a pit, right? Yeah. And you're going to have to have where the majority of the business is going to be pick up to go, pick up to go, yeah. eat, maybe have three benches like they have in Texas, you know, the barbecue houses. Yeah. But you never know with COVID, it's not worth it to have a big $2 million build out and then you have 25% capacity. Entonces, piensen ustedes, like when I go to Guavate, they have the pits. Yeah. And then you have your to-go, 90% of the orders, but 20%, 10% can maximize when the weather's good outdoors. That way you're kind of weather pandemic proof, you know? Because I think there's a big need uh, and opportunity for you guys on this, you know? That's, that's, that's funny that you say that because we always talk and we always end up with the same thought. We always say like, Richard always tell me, or I tell him, imagine yourself when you are on Uber Eats and you put like Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican cuisine. And the first thing that pop out is like Lechonera DMV. That's where we have to be. That's where we want to be. That's where we want to be known for. Um, and it's like you said, having the reality is like having the cooking style we do indoors is really hard because you have to have a super extreme ansel system. You need to have like a super heavy duty hood fans because we cook with charcoal and we cook with wood. Por eso, so, tiene que ser afuera, so, como que están en pillones, como están yeah, en pillones, exactly. cosas. Like that, it's, that's it's beautiful, exactly. bro. Another, exactly. another important part is the party. So we're Puerto Ricans and, and it's all about the gathering. La, la música y todo. Yeah, listen, like, I mean, again, got to give credit for the marketing, uh, Jose Mendin, La Placita. He brought La Placita to, to that part of Miami. Yeah. You guys can bring that vibe of the island, but make it business sufficient. So that's up. Now, let me ask you this, because you mentioned Uber Eats, Mario. Y la gente, after COVID, I believe, are going to, the, the opportunity of business, if you offer variety and some sort of health conscious, not that you're going to make the lechon vegan or anything like that, but what are some of the options you're offering, say, these fitness people? Because they, they, they eat like rabbits or, or like, you know, the, the, the last meal on earth, I don't want to have kale salad. Yeah. Pero, until we die, what kind of options have you guys thought about? Some options of some protein lechon and some vegetables or a salad? You guys are creative chefs. Have you thought about that? Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of like the work we're doing right now. Um, is well known, and there's nothing, there's no place to hide. Puerto Rican food is really hot, it's really heavy, and it's really starchy. You eat starch with starch and starch. You vegetables are not big part of our cuisine, um, and that's when the chef part of us com comes in. And that's something we're working right now, how we can create the, food, the, food. the our uh, the Puerto Rican food is like really heavy. Okay, so right? it's, it's a bunch of starch and a bunch of like rich protein. And then this is when me and Richard, this is what we're working right now, is trying to create some some plates and some dishes that are more like light for that type of clientele. Because some people like some we have to give the food to, to some of our friends and they're like, it's really good, but it's heavy. Especially yeah you're not used to it and if in order for us to reach another clientele not only for the Ricans we're gonna we want to reach as much clientele as we can we have to work on that and that's something we're doing we're trying to create like maybe some root some vegetables that we can cook in the in the ashes try to create more light things work more with the escabeche that is big do, do, do you guys like Chinese food oh yeah yeah, yeah we do okay, so you imagine I'm just you know you, you could have a, a, a lechon, a, you know, a piece of lechon con ensalada de aguacate. You can have a piece of lechon con bok choy that's roasted in the same pit and just put a citrus sauce, right? Because I think that's how you introduce it. I'm not telling you, you guys are talented, but you're on that way, you know? Uh, yeah, you can have el típico, which is starchy and delicious, and, and it's sometimes good to have a food coma, right? But I think that you guys are going to be elevating it that, that beautiful lechon with the side dish being something healthy so that even even the keto people, even the, the veget, you know, not the vegetarian, but even the keto people can say, this is heavy on protein, I need to eat that. Yep. You know, and leveraging, because you guys are in the United States, so you have access to so many vegetables, right? Yeah, we've been working lately on like roasted vegetables uh, with like crispy quinoa, 
and there you go. Regrets, um, something we're working on for the next uh, Lechonera menu uh, is a watercress salad. We, for us, it's super typical and is a, we call it berro, right? So yeah. everywhere you go in the south or west, uh, ensalada de berro is super, super, super known. And uh, we're, we're trying to lighten up a little bit the menus and, and bring some uh, different options for uh, different ethnicities because our clientele is not just Puerto Ricans. Yeah. It's not just Puerto Ricans. Lechon like, has a piece of a heart on every single culture and, and, and people really follow us and, and ask for, for different things. No, no, absolutely. And this is great dialogue because that's how we, that's how people elevate. That's how the Cuban food was elevated into like linen, white linens, $30 plates. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why Mexican food has been elevated because they, they rationalize the portions and they pair it. And then the Peruvians have done really good at that. Mm -hmm. I think Puerto Rican food, Colombian food, I want to do it for Nicaraguan food, el próximo nivel, you sure. know, by, by, by lighter, less traditional, sort of speak per dish, pero algo más, um, What's, what's selling out there, you know? So let's have some fun questions, okay? Primero, con Mario, eh, fue, eh, Richard, if today was ending, the last meal on earth, what would it be? My mom's, this is really funny, is white rice, uh, gandules with bollita, which are these little plant, uh, green banana dumplings inside. Mm. And then my mom, uh, I always make fun of her because she fried our boneless, skinless chicken thighs for like 30 minutes, <laughs> but they're delicious. I don't know what she, she do to that, but that will be my last meal. I get it every time I go back home or when she comes here to visit, that's my first meal. And that's what, that's what I will eat if, if I have the chance to have a last meal. There you go. And, and where are you, uh, your family from, Puerto Rico? From Aguada, the west side. We're okay. from the coast on the west side, yeah. Got it, got it. I, I love Puerto Rico, and uh, so I always like to explore. Richard, último día en este mundo, what would be the last meal? Um, Domplines. So if you go to the uh, to the south, um, when I started learning how dumplings are here, Domplines for us is like uh, like an arepa. It's a flour mm -hmm. arepa uh, that we fried and puff, and you do stew beans with uh, pig's feet. Um, and stuff them with them. So you Great. got fine ham, you got dumplings, and you got beans. Uh, that would be my last meal. So maybe okay, good. Next question in English is your pet peeve in the business. En español es, ¿qué te molesta? You, know, uh, you can start. <laughs> I think... Um, I think the Cubans use an expression that I like a lot. Uh, and he's la paja mental, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think a lot of us where we fell very short is on pretending on or desiring to be someone that we don't, we are not, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're not true to our culture sometimes. We're not true to ourselves, um, and it's hard to battle that, right? It's hard. It's hard to battle through um, not being honest and, and and not being able to express yourself the way you want. Um, so something that I don't like and, and, and something that I can't uh, handle is just not being true to yourself. That's why you, that's why you like my hashtag, hashtag no come mierdas. Yeah, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mario, P, get the think, that. what's your pet peeve in the industry? I think a little bit of that. Um, and also, I think there's, there's not much loyalty. Um, you know, you, you have to be loyal to the people that is around you. You have to be loyal to the people that have taught you what you know. You know, most of the time people forgot where they come from and forgot their roots. Um, for me, that's a no. You know, you have to remember all those chefs you work for. You have yep. to remember all your cooks, all the cooks that you work, that you work around. Them. And then that for me is the biggest thing is like, you have to be loyal and you have to be respectful with like everybody. Yeah. And, um, it doesn't matter what what title or whatever you have, um, but that's not only that doesn't only happen in the kitchen. That's what happens in life also. But those are that's kind of my pet my, my pet. Exactly in society, not just the business. Those are good qualities or pet peeves to have. Did you guys vote this uh, past election? Uh, I did. Okay, I did. and it's important not who you voted for, but that you did vote because part of the show is to show que somos Latino that we are tradicional, tenemos cultura, 
but we're also business forward and we also contribute to society because even if you don't vote, if, even if you vote nationally, voting locally is more important because it impacts our business. Yep. Y siempre la gente dice votan for that. It's not, it's more important to vote local because if we've learned anything through this pandemic is that local people have more to say in our business and our business is part of our life, you know? So that's why I asked the question, did you guys vote? And I'm sure you guys proud, uh, felt honored to vote. I was proud to vote. Uh, I, I was, and I still, so um, I think it's, you know, it's crazy to see everything that's happening, uh, but it has to happen. I think it's eye-opening and, and, and everyone is learning from it. Um, we, like, we talk about politics uh, many times and, and, and we always say like, I, I, at this point, I really don't care or we're not so focused into like who's winning the election or, or what happens. What we need is transparency and we need to make sure that um, you know, everyone feels important and, 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 and we feel that there is a, you know, an option for us, right? Yeah. And there's yeah. a future for, for our business and our families. And, and, and that's what it's all about. Because if we're too extreme on the right or the left, yep. it's too hard to talk. You're too far away. Yep. Por eso, la gente dice, no deben de hablar de la religión o la política. I, I'm actually... It, I think it's not so bad. I think you should be able to talk uh, what yeah. your beliefs are and not hold them in. Don't try to change my opinion. Pero yeah. por lo menos conversemos over un lechón, una yeah. medalla, un pitoro in my case, you know. Uh, but I think it's important that we be able to talk because that's what you're seeing in the, in the social media and that's what you're seeing in society, la división. And then as, as, as I always say, as a leader, you need to have your post, your, your, your side. You need to have your... Your, your postures to, to it a certain way um, is all about how you respect the others, right? Exactly. That's, that's what it's all about. Uh, if you are a leader, you have to you have to defend on what you believe. So and that's what makes a, a leader an important one is you defend what you believe and what and what you think is correct. But you have to understand that in front of you there might be somebody that thinks different than you, and you have to be able to respect his opinion or her opinion, no matter what it is. And that's what makes Leaders, and I think that's what we need in this, in the society we live here, in this country, in the United States, in Puerto Rico, in some of the countries on, on, on Latin America, is that, is being able to sit down, talk with people that doesn't think like you, but respect their opinion and share opinions. That's, that's right. what we need. No, no that, that's what we need because this, this society isn't a business. Yeah. It's a society. Yeah. La humanidad primero, you know? Yeah. Okay, last question. Dead or alive, who would you like to have dinner with? Me? Yeah. Um, I'd like to have dinner with Thomas Keller. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to connect you with a couple of chefs who work for his group. You know. uh, he's so Latino, and actually, he's Boricua, and el tipo es joven, and he's worked at Bouchon, um, and uh, French Laundry, and Ad Hoc. And, and I always joke with Richard, I'm not too patient to like wait or make reservations in advance to go to a restaurant. But I always tell Richard, the only place I will do a reservation month in advance is to eat at the French Laundry. So That's the only place in the, in the world. Hey, I live in Walnut Creek, which is 30 minutes. So I'm there like, you know, often. So when you guys come down to the West Coast, we will go there. I'll make sure we get taken care. Okay, Thomas Keller. And what would you be, what conversation, la conversación que sería? I like... You know, I like everything that his vision of like food and his vision about business and his vision about culture. I think he got a lot more to offer than just probably the greatest American born chef right now. Yeah. Right in history. Um, but he have a lot more to offer the way he the way he speaks, the way he addresses what he believes, you know, for me is really important. It's always something that I got on on my career. It's always something that I have like how can I try to emulate him? Yeah. Uh, because for, that's that's big idol on in the industry for me is like Thomas Keller. No, I love that. It's a great answer. Richard, dead or alive, who would you like to have dinner with? Um, I'll say my father. Mm -hmm. I'll say my father. I think he was he was a, a big figure on my on my life, but more than that is 
uh, my culinary career. Uh, he was a chef and we were obviously different, different times, different people. We were completely different all the time. And, um, but he, he kind of like patterned me in my career and where I'm at right now. Um, so better or alive, if I had a choice, I'll have dinner with my dad. I love that. I love that. And just to share a culinary story, I don't chef, you know? That's it. That's it. Uh, I mean, I took, I took my career very important, very serious. And I think he was a, he was the most important piece of it. Um, huh. Not to take, you know, from my mother and my, my family, they always been there and, and, mm-hmm. and I love them to head to that. Right. But, but he was definitely a piece of that puzzle that I needed to, to jump into this professional uh, career. I love it, man. Oye, Mario, Richard, thank you eh, por la entrevista, por pasar tiempo conmigo. Uh, I, le deseo mucho éxito. And you know me, I'm going to try to connect my friends that live in your area and anything I can do and uh, even get you guys one day to Comidazo on the West Coast because it's going to be in Napa. So you imagine una lechón, you know, in, in Napa con vino. We're going to elevate it. So I'm going to, I'm going to work on that. But thank you guys both for being on the show, man. Un abrazo. And I can't wait for our next interview to see the update post COVID. Como estamos haciendo. Gracias a ti. Gracias a ti. Thank you for your time. Gracias. Always, man. Gracias.